Good morning. I'm Mark Allen with Gaber.io, and I'm here today with Doug Conant, the CEO of Conant Leadership. Good morning, Doug. How you doing? Great. Good morning to you. Good morning. Well, thank you for joining us today. So to start with, can you share a brief background of yourself and your work experience? In 25 words or less? Well, you go for a little bit I'm, more than 25. <laughs> given that I'm 69 years old, there's a lot to talk about. Okay. Uh, I grew up in Chicago, went to college and graduate school at Northwestern University at Kellogg. And then I started a 40-year uh, career in business, worked for four uh, large companies, uh, General Mills Craft, Nabisco, and then I was CEO of Campbell Soup Company. Uh, prior, prior to Campbell Soup Company, I was president of Nabisco Foods in uh, northern New Jersey, up in Parsippany, New Jersey, mm. for the last five years of my run with uh, Nabisco. And at that time, Nabisco was part of the world's largest LBO. A book was written about it called Barbarians at the Gate. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we were the world's largest LBO acquired by KKR and then trying to find a way to make it public again. Quite a roller coaster for a decade of my career. The last five years I was president of the foods company. And uh, then we had a good run, sold the company, although which was sad, but bittersweet, but it was what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I went to Campbell. I was at Campbell for 10 years uh, as CEO uh, and uh, retired 10 years ago, founded Conant Leadership. I've also been on many corporate boards. I was chairman of Avon Products for uh, three years and I tried to help save that company. And I've been on multiple boards. I guess the last thing I would say is I'm heavily involved in the nonprofit space. And uh, currently I'm on several boards, including chief executives for corporate purpose, where I'm chair, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Center for Higher Ambition Leadership, uh, uh, the uh, uh, National Organization on Disabilities, and several others. So I'm very involved in the nonprofit space right now. Hmm. Very, very impressive career. So, so tell us about Conant Leadership. What's that all about and, and what is your goal? Well, my goal is to, to champion leadership that works in the 21st century. Most people that are my vintage uh, grew up in an era hmm. where it was more hierarchical and uh, you did what you were told. And uh, if you didn't know how to do it, you would go ask your boss how to do it because hmm. your boss knew how to do it. Today, bosses don't know what the people working for them uh, uh, need to know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so these people need to be led in an enlightened way. Uh, and my observation is that we can do better. Mm -hmm. And I, I sharpened my skills in that area during my work life at both Nabisco and Campbell. I developed a perspective on what works. And when I retired, I had felt like I had a positive impact on the people at Nabisco and a positive impact on the people at Campbell, not just the people that work there, but all of our stakeholders. And I thought, you know, I wanna champion this beyond those two companies. I believe I have something to say to the world. Mm -hmm. So we started uh, championing leadership that works in the 21st century. We may get into that, we may not. And uh, as a result, uh, we started a, a social media platform. We're talking with 400,000 people a day on leadership that works. Uh, we're not in it for the money. I don't take a salary. I've been doing it for 10 years. Uh, we do charge for some of our events just to cover our costs. Typically, we make more than our cost. And if we make more, we, we give it away. Hmm. Uh, the staff likes to say we're in this for the meaning, not the money. Uh, and we're just trying to help people do better. Wherever we go, we see people that hunger to do better, mm -hmm. but are just feeling trapped and stuck. And we have a point of view on how we can help. And so that's what we do at Conant Leadership. Wow, that's very great. Um, and and your, the, your target audience, is it is it anywhere from the brand new leader all the way up to the CEO level? Hey, we all need work. I need work, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, hopefully I'm gonna do a little better tomorrow than I did today. Mm -hmm. And I, I work with CEOs, I work with people in C-suites, but I also teach uh, emerging leaders and aspiring leaders as well. I, I'm, I'm chairman of the Higher Ambition Leadership Institute up in Boston, where I teach. And uh, I also worked at Kellogg at Northwestern, where I taught. So I've been teaching leaders 
for a long time of all shapes, sizes, persuasions, and ages. Mm. So uh, we all can do better. And yes. all I'm trying to do is help people find their footing in this leadership arena in a way that works for them. And let me tell you, it's different for every person. Hmm. Every, you know, I would contend that your life story is your leadership story. And most of us haven't really examined that and, and, and slogged through in a pretty brief period of time. Most of us haven't slogged through what we should be learning from our life journey and what really works for us in, in our leadership life. Uh, we help people do that. And we find that they can do it remarkably expeditiously if they focus on it. So that's what, that's what it's about. Well, and it makes sense when you think about it, but you, you're, you get so busy that you never take the time to really analyze that stuff. Is that the best way to describe it? Yeah, and, and in, a, in a completely different context, someone once told me that uh, slow is fast and fast is slow. Mm -hmm. And if you slow down and you really reflect and study the world around you a little bit, you can go faster with your career journey and your contribution profile. If you're going so fast that you don't have time to examine what's going on around you, you get stuck mm -hmm. and you're like that gerbil on the treadmill mm -hmm. you know? and you can do better. Mm -hmm. And, and it's a cop out. I would contend it's a cop out to say, I'm too busy. I can't do it. It's your one life. You mm -hmm. can do better. And by the way, Leadership, I treat leadership as sacred ground. You're affecting people's lives. They're counting on you, mm -hmm. your family's life and the people that work for you. My goodness, if that's not important to slow down and think about for a minute, then shame on you. And you can do it in a way that works. And that's my contention. We wrote a book on it, as I was sharing with you right before we went on air. We launched the book on March 5th, right into the teeth of this global pandemic. We worked on it for over four years. Mm -hmm. Finally got it out the door and launched. And I had my book launch event on March 5th on Park Avenue in New York. And we started canceling things on March 6th and had to reimagine everything we were doing. And that was a year ago this week. So we're actually doing a virtual relaunch now and migrating from uh, the hands-on launch that we had before in person to a virtual relaunch uh, as we're all having to do these kinds of things remotely. And I'm finding the whole experience incredibly fascinating. Mm, yeah, well, and me too, but it, it, it's interesting because everything did change March, right around this time last year, it's been just about a year. Yeah. Um, and do you find that people at first probably were going, were the hamster on the treadmill, right? But then after a while they did have time to slow down and think about stuff. Do you, did you find that true of, of leaders or did, did it have a different effect? Well, I, I found the first, I'm going to make up the day, the first mm -hmm. 90 days of this thing, the first quarter of mm -hmm. this experience, I think was just remarkably jarring for all of us. Yes. We, we were unprepared for it individually, as companies, as society. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we did, weren't at our best. Uh, and we just slugged through the first quarter of, mm -hmm. of this. Yeah. Then I saw people begin to get their footing in the summer. And as people started to hit the fall, uh, uh, they, uh, they were finding their way through work. They were more anxious about, uh, interestingly, other things came up, social unrest and political rancor mm -hmm. rose to the top of the charts, right? Mm -hmm leading up to the November election. Work was actually a, a place of, of a safe place, <laughs> you know? Yes. I think Edelman, uh, Richard Edelman, he, 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 his uh, firm does the Edelman uh, Trust Barometer every year. They've done it for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And through all this, uh, business has become the most trusted uh, or a form in society. People didn't have confidence in government. Mm -hmm. They didn't have conf confidence in nonprofits because the, non the nonprofits were resource constrained. Mm -hmm. They have no confidence in social media. Mm -hmm. They have no confidence in media, in journalism. Mm -hmm. And people 
while they don't love business, they trusted business more than those other things. Mm -hmm. And particularly they trusted their company's business because the companies were leaning into communication, trying to make things work. And all of a sudden, by contrast to everything else that people were experiencing, the company was the rudder in the water. Mm -hmm. They were actually thinking about it yeah. and trying to help you navigate it. Mm -hmm. Who else was there for you? Right. Well, the government wasn't a nonprofit, wasn't social media, mm -hmm. what, wasn't the journalists who were just reporting what wasn't working mm -hmm. and who, how everybody was doing it wrong. Uh, companies were actually constructively engaged in trying to make it work for people. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't pretty, but relatively speaking, they were the only ones there. Yes. So I, I think by the fall, we were starting to hit our stride. We were starting to figure it out. And right now, I got to say, after the election, after the holidays, people have come back. And in this fourth quarter of this pandemic leading up to this mm -hmm. point in time, I think people have sort of started to figure it out. Light at the end of the tunnel with, uh, with a variety of things, including mm -hmm. the vaccinations. And so uh, I have this sense of cautious optimism uh, in terms of uh, the corporate world mm -hmm. uh, relative to where it was. I'm not saying back to where it used to be, but relative mm -hmm. to where it was, there's this optimism and people feel it. Yeah. And, you know, and I do believe if you want to, it's how you show up. It's not what you say. I mean, that's helpful. Telling people you empathize with them and, oh, I'm so sorry about that. Mm -hmm. But then it's the people who roll up their sleeves and try and make it better. Yes. And right now, the people that are trying to make it better are these companies that are trying to make it work for their employees, mm -hmm. not just because, not just out of altruism, but because they have to make the business work. But one hand washes the other and they've realized that you can't ask employees to value your agenda as an enterprise if you don't tangibly demonstrate to them that you value their agenda as citizens. Mm -hmm. It just won't work. Mm -hmm. And so companies, which makes me positive about all this, companies have woken up to we got to actually, we got to seriously pay attention to our employees agenda if we want them to pay attention to ours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think there was a trend towards that before the, the pandemic, but I think it, it escalated it greatly. And, and, and going forward, because we are, you do feel the optimism, we are starting to come out of it. How do you think it's going to go be going forward? Do you think that, you know, because remote work has taken hold. Do you think that's going to be the new norm or do you think it's going to be a hybrid or, or what's your opinion on this? I, I don't have a crystal ball. I mean, mm -hmm. What everybody says is it's going to be a hybrid mm -hmm. because people are finding their footing with the virtual community. But I believe they are grieving the loss of the physical community. Yes. And so I think where we're headed is the word is hybrid. Mm -hmm. uh, we're pivoting. No, we don't need to be at the office every day for most jobs. I mean, if you're working in a food manufacturing plant, you got to show up, right? Because we got to make the food, mm -hmm. okay? Or uh, an automobile plant, you got to show up because we got to make the car. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, services and white collar work, mm -hmm. I think that work will ultimately be done by a hybrid. It's really mm -hmm. sector specific. And, uh, and each business has a different rhythm, which requires a different uh, mm -hmm. probably perspective on how that hybrid should look, but it will be hybrid. People will be working more from home. I think they will find their footing with family and friends and community. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll be better off for it. Yeah. I, think our, I think we needed permission to break away from the old model of nine to five in the office. We need a permission. We've got it now. We got it, yes. And, and I think a lot of it too, I mean, I agree with you on per sector, but I also think it has to do too with the individual person. I think the, you know, once kids start going back to school full time, I think that ad, that's gonna make things even better for the average worker, would you agree? Well, I, I have a lot of friends, you know, uh, all levels of organizations. And uh, 
you know, they're in New York City, they're working in a two bedroom apartment or three bedroom apartment, which works fine when they go to the office every day and the kids go to school and they connect and they do homework at night. And that works fine. But when they're all on top of each other 24 seven, it's a disaster. Yep. And, and so lots of friends are struggling with that right now, trying to do the work, especially working moms. Uh, but, but dads too, I, I'm not, don't mm -hmm. discriminate there, but, uh, uh, I, th I think when there's more space and people are able to come and go, uh, you know, you need space in your togetherness, yes. for your togetherness to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so I think that that's a harbinger of, of things will get better uh, and we will feel our way through it. You know, we learn by doing it. And sadly, we learn by, re you know, we're basically built to react to what's thrown at us. Mm -hmm. and then to figure a way through it. And so it's being thrown at us and we're figuring our way through it. Yeah, and I think we've figured it out pretty well now. I think you're right. I think it's it's gonna start to be better. So um, your your uh, company is called Conan Leadership. You, you talked about your book earlier. Why don't you give us a plug on your book? What's the name of your book and where can people get it? A book is, the book is called The Blueprint mm -hmm. and you can get it anywhere books are sold. We made, even though our, book launch here here it is the blueprint by douglas conan and amy with amy fetterman six practical steps to lift your leadership to new heights uh with the we, our goal is to help people get unstuck and uh it, it it's uh, made many of the best seller lists despite all the craziness in the market and it's all about create you know look you and i we all live we have cockamamie lives, right? Mm -hmm. They're crazy, right? Frenetic. And when you start talking about lifting your leadership, people start thinking, oh my God, I got to go get an MBA in leadership from somewhere. I don't have time for that. Well, we, and I didn't have time for that in mm -hmm. my career where I started out at an entry level job and ultimately became a, a chairman and CEO. Uh, but we found that you can take this in a bite-sized way. And in a couple of days, you can get yourself on a whole new trajectory in a way that works for you. Most of the leadership books that have been written are written by people who probably haven't slogged, walked a mile in your shoes. They've studied mm -hmm. people who have, but they haven't been there. Yeah, I've been there for 45 years, been mm -hmm. there. And so I've taken all the learning I've done over the last 45 years and I built it into a practical book that in a couple of weeks, you can transform how you walk in the world as a leader. And the key is that you got to show up as you, you know, Brene Brown, who mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of every year, I pick a quote of the year for me that mm -hmm. I sort of live by. And this year it was Brene's quote, and it happened to be perfect with the timing of my book. She said, you can either walk inside your story and own it, or you can stand outside your story and hustle for your worthiness every day. I was walking inside my parents' story for a long time, mm. my teacher's story for a long time, mm. my, my coaches and my boss's story. I wasn't walking inside my story. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until I got fired, lost my job and had to find my way that I started to realize, you know, I do have a story and I have to be true to that story. And I have to, live my own life in a way that works for me and all the people with whom I live and work. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what this book is about. And it's, uh, and we're very proud of it. And we are, uh, as I said, we're relaunching it this week. We've got a, uh, got a great panel of speakers that we're doing all week for our Blueprint Leadership Summit, including uh, today, Stephen M. R. Covey this afternoon with Meta Norgard, tomorrow, Bill George, uh, from Harvard Business School, former chairman and CEO of Medtronic, Deanna Mulligan, the next day, former chairman and CEO, Guardian Life Insurance, just wrote a great book called Higher Purpose, H-I-R-E, Purpose. Mm -hmm. And she's one of the 50 most, uh, uh, most important uh, women uh, in, the, in the business women in the United States. And then we close on Thursday with Indra Nui, who's a uh, retired uh, chairman CEO of PepsiCo, and we'll talk leadership with her. 
And she at times has been voted the second most important woman in the world. She wow. is she is a gifted leader. And all of these people walk to the beat of their own drum. Mm -hmm. But they've thought about it. Mm -hmm. You know, they take it seriously and they've thought about it and they've done it in a way that they could approach it despite their cockamamie life. Mm -hmm. I mean, Indra Nui of all people. She when she grew up in India, she performed in a rock band. She played the guitar. Hmm. Uh, she she goes to the beat of her own drum. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you can't take that away from people. You've got to help them tap into that so they can be alive when they're when they're working. Mm -hmm. And then you got to help them leverage that lively approach to life in a way that works in the environment you're in. And that's what the book's about. Wow, that is fascinating. And I actually, I look forward to ordering it myself. I'll, I'll uh, get on, is it? I'm Order two. How many kids you got? You know, pass it on. Two, so I have to get three, I have to get three now. You're right. There you go. I would, and actually, I, it, it will, it is good advice for both of them to, to be themselves, right? Absolutely. Everyone else is taken. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, they, Warren Bennis had another good quote. He was one of my old mentors. He's from uh, California. He was living in Santa Barbara. Hmm. Uh, we used to have breakfast together at the Viceroy Hotel on the beach in Santa Monica. I, I said Santa Barbara, I meant Santa Monica. And he had this great quote. He used to say, Doug, becoming a leader is synonymous with becoming yourself. It's precisely that simple. And it is also that difficult. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's what you and I experience and continue to as we grow. Mm -hmm. And that's what our kids are going through now. Yes, you're I right. have kids in their 30s. They're going through the same thing. Yes, they are. <laughs> well, Doug, good luck on the, on the book launch this week and going forward. And uh, good luck with uh, Conant Leadership. And I want to thank you for your time today. It's been fascinating talking to you. Uh, have a great week. Okay. Thank you. I wish you the same. Thank you.